Right, so that's just to understand the basic process, the way bones heal is they get, excuse me, all the types of things go in there, like a, a callus formations, a callus form, you get blood vessels that get built up. First it becomes spongy bone, then it becomes compact bone. Unless it's an area where it's normally spongy bone, then it'll probably stay a spongy bone. And then let's say, for example, if you have, let's say here's your femur, And then you get a fracture. So that would be a displaced fracture, right? So then let's say it's going to heal like this. And then what can happen is eventually the osteoclast will start wearing that down and start building this up. So if you have a bad enough displaced fracture, it may still be displaced, but it can still trim a little bit off the one end and build it up on the other side. So that's what bone healing can do, whereas connective tissue like ligaments and tendons, they can't do that. So now we've talked about, this must be mean we're getting close to the end, right? <laughs> so we'll talk about mechanical stress. So there's something called Wolf's Law. And what that is is that bone responds to mechanical stress. So whatever demands are placed on the bone, it's going to respond to. Right? Just like any other type of situation, if, if the demands are placed on something, a lot of times it's going to respond to it. But if there is no demand, if there's no need, it's not going to have a reason to do anything. So the way that you can see that how this happens is that Long bones are going to be thickest in the middle part of the shaft. So they don't make the noodles the right way, the same way that bones are. But basically, this shaft will be thicker in the center part where it's going to, so if I try to bend this, where is it going to bend? It's going to bend in the middle. So that's where the uh, compact bones are going to be thickest in there. And then curved bones are going to be thicker where it's going to tend to buckle. And we'll see a picture of that here. So just like here in the femur, okay, your, your pelvic bone is sitting here. And then that's where your body weight's pressing down. So the body weight's pressing down here. But then the force from the longer bone here is compressing up like that. They're not right in line with each other. Okay? So then you're going to have to have you're going to have this line of force going through this way. So then the fibula and the bone are going to form in line with that stress. So you see, kind of form like that. So it's going to strengthen it, try to strengthen itself there. Okay. So on this side, it's being compressed because this is pressing down here, so this side is being compressed and it's being pulled apart on that side. So internally the bone's going to restructure its trabeculae depending on the stress of the bone changes. All right, so then now we talked about bone homeostasis, and now we're talking more specifically about the actual mineral calcium itself and how that's maintained in the body. And they've pretty much covered this stuff already, basically, is that calcium is the most abundant mineral and it's stored in the bones. That's where most of it's found. Most of the, about 99% of the calcium is going to be in the bones. But it needs to be circulating through the blood because it's involved in membrane depolarization. So we talked about, I can't remember saying it before, you talked about how nerve conduction moves and has to do with ions being moved and then also muscle contraction involves the use of calcium as a neurotransmitter. So calcium needs to be circulating in the blood. If it's not there, it's going to have to come out of the bones. And so then now we talked a little bit about this before, is that the type of exercise that you're going to do, some exercise demands more strength in the bones versus others. Okay? You know, swimming, skydiving, something like that, unless you hit the ground hard, you're not going to need bones as much. But they, and then maybe like, you know, bicycle riding, that's not going to be as much. Maybe it's a little bit more than swimming. 
but then on the other extreme, th things like weightlifting. Okay, so again, if you want to do exercises that are build bone strength, you're going to want to do these ones that are going to involve weight bearing. Okay, so obviously when you're walking, you're doing weight bearing onto your lower body, but you're not doing so much onto the arms. So sometimes doing, you need to do, especially in you know females that want to maintain or build bone density. You want to do you know, weightlifting exercises, resistance exercises, things like that.